Hi, I'm John Biggs. Welcome to TechCrunch Disrupt in Brooklyn. Uh, this is 2016, and we are here with a guy from, I, I would argue that you're from like 2020 or 2040, right, John? John I, Sudman, you're a novelist. I you're a, a novelist. You're a thinker, you're a creator. You had a booth here, you were in, one of your first books was Acts of the Apostles, and it was a, it was a book about genetic engineering and, and nano machines and also the good stuff. Yeah. And now I think you're getting really prescient because the stuff that you talked about back then is important now, right? Right, right. Well, in my first novel, I invented uh, or I imagined nano machines that could find any arbitrary sequence of DNA and change it to any other, uh, you know, be programmed to change it to any other sequence of DNA. Yep. Uh, inside a functioning cell, and not just in the lab, but in, and uh, that's, mm -hmm. that technology now exists. It's called CRISPR, and uh, if you haven't heard of it, you soon will. Yeah. It's going to be everywhere. So what was the original inspiration? So when did you write the, when did you write Acts? I started writing it in 1995, and I finished in 1999. Okay. Yeah, I saw, I wanted to write a, a, a murder mystery. I was uh, working at a computer company there, and I was uh, talking to a friend of mine who couldn't figure out why his chip wouldn't work. Yeah. And uh, and he was looking at an etch plot up on the wall of his chip, and and uh, just staring at it, trying to figure out where the bug was. And I said, "Tell me something. I know how you put a, a Trojan horse in software. How would you put it in hardware? And uh, or could you put it in hardware?" And he said, "There's 220,000 transistors on that yeah. chip." You could hide the fucking Titanic in there, and I wouldn't know it. <laughs> and so then I came up with a plot. Oh, the chip designer finds a bug, gets murdered, and why? Why would somebody, you know? Okay. And from there, the only reason I could come up with putting it, going to all the trouble of putting a Trojan horse in a hardware chip, was to program nanomachines to rearrange re DNA. All right. So I so guess that, anyway, that's that's that's, a, that's Occam's razor. I mean, yeah, right. exactly. The, <laughs> obvious, the, the obvious, the obvious conclusion. The obvious conclusion, right? So you've been writing for you've been writing for a number of years. You're working on uh, a few other books right now, right? Right. Well, I wrote a book about a storytelling contest between two artificial intelligence constructs, and uh, and now we're starting to see novel writing software appear. Yeah. And uh, so I I was thinking about that about 15 years ago also. So what does the future look like from your standpoint as a writer, as a as a thinker? I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think. It, 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 I, I go back and forth between uh, it looks like a beautiful world where all hunger banished and people getting along. And so abundance versus? Abundance and, and children not being left to pick garbage in the slums of Nairobi and and, uh, and total annihilation of, of everything on earth. Somewhere between those two, maybe. I mean, what, what would be preferable? Would total annihilation be preferable? No, 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 no. A happy future would yeah, be a happy preferable. Future, yeah. A happy future. Yeah, to take but care of the you, children, you know. But if you couldn't get, if you couldn't get, if you ended up in the middle, wouldn't you just want to go for the rest of it, just like the jackpot? Well, I would just like to see if we could just stop having wars and stuff. Yeah. That would be good, you know. Okay. We're we're the solution. That, that what I was I was talking to a friend of mine, the scientist George Church. Uh, a little while ago, and I was saying that I think with more and more powerful technologies getting in, giving more and more leverage, the force amplification of an individual is so much greater than it ever was before, mm -hmm. so one individual can do so much more harm. The only defense against that, because the, the, the technology is so hard to control, is civilization. You have to make it so people don't want to blow each other mm -hmm. up. You have to make it so people are happy to get along with each other. Now, how do you do that? You change human nature. How do you change human nature? I, I'm working on it. Yeah, I was talking with Ben Hammersley, and his, his vision of the future is that everything's coffee and croissants everywhere around the world. Yeah. Because one of the de definitions of a civilized society or a society that you want to live in yeah. is that you can go anywhere and you can have a coffee and a croissant and yeah. you feel comfortable. Anywhere from Palestine to, to the slums in Nairobi to, yeah. to Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yeah. These things are, it's a, it's, it's kind of boring, but it's not flat. It's a, yeah. it's a kind of a, it's kind of a pleasant world of abundance. So, so what's next? What are you writing now? Um, well, right now I'm writing a, uh, I'm finishing up a little short novel that is a prequel to my first one. My first one was set in 1995 and I'm um, writing now a, a novel that's set around the Asilomar DNA conference, which took place in 1975. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the Asilomar DNA conference? Mm -mm. Well, that, that was an interesting historical occurrence. It, in uh, 1974, there was a, a, a scientist named Paul Berg at Stanford who did some of the first uh, genetic engineering experiments, some people in his lab did anyway, where they took uh, genes from a virus and then put it in a bacterium. 
And when other scientists found out about this, they said, hey, hold the phone, this, this could be really dangerous. Yeah. We could be creating bacteria that can transmit cancer, for example, we don't know. So they had a conference at Asilomar, California, and everybody in, uh, who was doing advanced DNA research from around the world came to discuss the potential hazards. And it, it kind of uh, turned into a real big free-for-all because it got on the front page of the New York Times and it inflamed the worries of lots of people who didn't really understand the biology mm -hmm. and uh, got the, 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 the general public in kind of a panic about uh, the potential dangers. And at, at that time, the, the scientific consensus was there are the, the dangers here are really controllable. There's nothing to get frightened about. But but now with the CRISPR technology, people are starting yeah, talking about having more. Do we, do we need a do we need a conference for that? Because yeah. are we in a world now that that the uh, tool like CRISPR or a tool like uh, nano machinery, quantum computing, that sort of thing, yep. or the force multiplier, as you said, is massive for even one person. I can press a button and I can solve cryptographic keys that that were almost impossible to solve for a yep. number of decades. Um, so it's really interesting to see that. Where, where, are you, where are you getting your inspiration for other stuff? What do you, what's on the horizon for you in terms of, in terms of technologies? Or are you just really into the CRISPR um, stuff? And I'm, I'm, I'm working on the CRISPR stuff now, and my, my preoccupation for 20 years or more has been the convergence of biological and digital technology. A DNA is a programming tool uh, from one direction and tools to program DNA from the other uh, direction. Mm -hmm. but, but really what I'm, I'm most focusing on is is science and civilization and anti-science. It's really kind of distressing to me that a, a, a society that you would hope would be civilized, like the United States of America, we have anti-vaxxers and anti-sciencers <laughs> and we have uh, people who believe all kinds of new age bullshit that is really, it's, it's really pernicious, I think. It's not just benign. It's not just, you know, somebody's... It's not fun. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not harmless for people to believe stupid stuff because, you know, Consequences so, follow from it. So, John, where can people find some of your books and some they of your writing? They can find them, of course, on Amazon. Just mm -hmm. Google me up. John Sundman. John, and you can find my website, johnsundman.com. All right. And uh, take a look. All right, super. The, the internet knows all about me. All right, all right. super. John Sundman, novelist, uh, thinker. Uh, he's worried about CRISPR. I'm John Biggs. This is TechCrunch Disrupt. Thanks for watching.